Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. Some of you have reached out and some of you have sent me an article that recently published in Dermatology Times and I just love that, I love the interaction, uh, so thank you. And it's about a study that came out May 25th showing that nearly 30% of the tested sunscreens had benzene, a known carcinogen, in their formulations. So it's not supposed to be there, it's a contaminant, it's not on the list of ingredients, but it's pretty scary. Um, so I thought I would do a video on this, and I also wanted to leave you links down below giving you the list of tested sunscreens that had the carcinogen in them, a list of tested sunscreens that came back free and clear and good to go and good for use, and a third list of how to safely dispose of these sunscreens in case you have them in your home, which is pretty terrifying to think that you put something on your skin, the largest organ of your body, every day, especially now that it's summertime and we apply to more body parts more than wintertime, which is just face and neck, you know, uh, a formulation that is carcinogenic and not safe to throw in the garbage that needs um, a biohazard waste disposal. But I'll leave that down below for you as well. Please like this video and comment. Uh, comments and likes help the algorithm and help the video get seen and my channel grow. And if you would like to subscribe, then that's even better. The Dermatology Times article uh, posted uh, May 25th talks about a lab out of Connecticut called Valashore, which is an independent lab. They have their own pharmacy and what they do, they're essentially like an independent opinion and a quality control company. They take batches of product and they test them for all kinds of different things. And last year they added benzene as another ingredient that they would test for. And for this particular study, what they did is they took hundreds of sunscreens and tested them for benzene. And 27% or 78 different sunscreen products came back positive. The sunscreens tested were almost all uh, drugstore sunscreens, but they weren't exclusively chemical sunscreens. They included chemical sunscreens, mineral sunscreens, and various formulations in the forms of sprays, lotions, various types of sunscreens, and also post-sun products. So, you know, those types of things like if you have a sunburn or you want more moisturization to your skin or you want a deeper bronze for your tan, all the post-sun uh, products, they tested those as well. And some of those also came back with benzene. But what is benzene? It's a liquid chemical that is found in pollution. It's found in gasoline, tobacco smoke, and it can even be found in the um, smoke of forest fires. It is a chemical that is associated with leukemias or blood cancers, and the FDA has a very tight control over this chemical because it is a well-established carcinogen, and it does not allow this chemical to be put into um, any drugs unless there's a specific reason, an exception to the rule where some particular medical formulation requires this, and then the FDA limits it at two parts per million. So that is the highest concentration allowed to be marketed. Now the scary thing is, the highest concentration of benzene in these tested sunscreens was 6.7, which is three times higher than allowed by the FDA. It's terrifying. It was only one that was that high and there was another one that was almost that high. Now, most of the sunscreens tested were drugstore brands and the most common one I saw was Neutrogena. I also saw Banana Boat, Sun Bum, La Roche-Posay was there, Elta MD was there, and they were both on the list shown to have uh, the carcinogen and shown to be clear of the carcinogen. So it's not clear what ingredient was contaminated because it's not brand dependent. It's not mineral versus chemical sunscreen dependent, and they don't exactly know 
where the benzene came from. What's scary is that sunscreen is like body lotion in the sense that we use a large amount and cover a large surface area of our skin, which is again, the largest organ in our body. So if the sunscreen you use is on neither list, in other words, you can't find it on the contaminated sunscreens, but it's also, well, it's basically not tested and wasn't included in this batch test, then you don't know whether it could possibly have benzene or not. There were no medical grade sunscreens tested in this analysis, but if I had to guess, and it's my guess, you know, I don't know. I highly doubt that high level, you know, technologically sophisticated formulations would have um, this contaminant. And the only reason I say that is because the medical grade sunscreens put so much work and effort into creating the formulations, into coating technology. So, you know, zinc oxide is white and it causes a white cast. And so these um, companies create proprietary formulations for the coating of zinc oxide to eliminate the white cast, proprietary formulations for incorporating iron oxides for blue light protection. I would think that because they have such a complicated chemistry and so much that they create themselves rather than a ready-made product, that the chances are pretty low that they would um, that they would be contaminated, but there is no way to know that for sure. So hopefully they will figure out what ingredients were contaminated. Um, and when they do, it'll be easy to know, you know, who buys from those companies and what ingredient it is and if it's used, you know, in which formulations. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them down below. And don't forget to like this video and I will see you in the next one.